In a rapidly changing world, businesses have to keep up if they want to stay relevant. No matter how successful your business has been to date, that doesn't mean it will continue to grow and do well going forward. So what can you do to ensure that your business stays the course? On the other hand, if you want to start a business, what are the things you have to do to get it off the ground and stay the course? Here to share the ideas expressed in his book, Exponential Potential, so much more than a disruptive playbook, is Dean Furman, an actuary and founder of 1064 Degrees, an innovation and growth advisory firm. Dean, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Let's start off by telling me a little bit about yourself, your journey as from an actuary to an independent businessman. Yes, so I qualified as an actuary um, and went to Discovery, like uh, many people do. Either you go to the Discoveries or the other traditional financial service companies. And I had a real knack for innovation, but not. I didn't enjoy the actuarial scene. I found a very dry, lot of numbers. It wasn't my forte. Uh, but I've had a very good knack with innovation, we won a couple of their annual innov actuarial innovation awards, and I was really good at that. And then eventually I went to the Alexander Forbes group to head a product for the group. And while I was there, also got involved with looking after innovation and function, and I really, really enjoyed the thinking outside of the box and thinking differently. But the real change happened for me in 2015. Um, the CEO at the time, amazing guy, Edward Kiesweta, had a, I have a huge amount of respect for him. He really, he really was a visionary in his thinking. A lot of companies now have formed these little skunk works outside of the company to be able to help rapid innovation. But the, back in 2015, not many companies were doing it. So Edward Kieswetter chatted to me and I landed up heading this separate unit funded by Alexander Forbes called Interruption Holdings for two years where the goal was to look at rapid innovations for the group and very disruptive innovations. But it was the first time ever I was outside of a normal corporate, you know, where you have your usual run of the more the things you have to do every day, day to day priorities, obligations. And the problem is when you're inside a company, you just stop learning because you're so busy the whole time and you're surrounded by same type of people with same type of opinions as you and your frame of reference and your vision of the world just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So when for the first time now I had a mandate to actually go look how the world's changed, how can you apply it, I was just shocked at really how little I knew. I'd always considered myself, and I was to be honest, uh, ahead of the rest, but I just realized I had fallen so, so, so far behind. So over a two year period, it was amazing in that role to be able to learn more and more and more and, uh, and uh, to be able to grow myself at the same time, finding a new um, division for the group and creating a lot of mm -hmm. awesome things along the way. But I was just, my mind was blown. And uh, from there it caught the bug about how much you need to continually learn yeah. on an ongoing mm -hmm. basis. Now as well, at, at bigger businesses, get into this rhythm of okay we're doing it it's working mm. we don't have to change why change it if it's working yes um you net mentioned some examples in your book as well that really suffered com huge companies that were doing really well and then suffered because they didn't innovate they didn't yes. stay on top of developments and trends and new things like blockbusters yes. taken over by netflix um yes. can you bring some other examples Definitely. and i think I think, you know, there are a lot of classic examples, but I think more closer to home, I do give a lot of advice to a lot of the different big companies. Mm -hmm. And I've actually been shocked at just how far behind a lot of them have fallen with their thinking. And the truth is, I know it's a little bit controversial to say, but people need to realize that the executives and directors of most companies are actually just employees. Unless it's someone who who was a founder of the group. So for example, Adrian Gore got a huge amount of respect for him as well. It's his baby, you know, at, at Discovery. He's got a different long-term vision for mm -hmm. a company. They're doing different things, entering different markets, innovating in a different way, because he doesn't just care about the next balance sheet. Whereas most executives at these companies, uh, all they, they want to make sure, some of it for their own purposes, some of it just to, you know, make sure that they, um, that they don't upset shareholders and everything that say thinking about okay 
their mandate is let's make sure our next results are as good as we can next results next results and if you're doing that and not focusing also on the longer term things and not spending money changing the way you're doing mm -hmm. things um, and taking certain risks that you need to take to stay ahead um, you will fall behind so I find that companies now especially the ones who haven't done as well and they're starting to cut costs cut mm -hmm. costs cut costs and to start starting to to take away money from things like uh, like new things like innovation mm -hmm. and trying to just protect their core but that's just almost the start of the end so mm -hmm. when you talk about blockbusters mm -hmm. what happens is then the next year they're not they're falling further behind and their results also aren't good because they haven't invested now in trying to create those new things and then they've got big legacy systems and it's harder for for big companies it's much harder to innovate mm -hmm. than for a small startup a, st a small startup you've got a blank piece of paper you know, a company, your biggest strength, your big size is also your biggest weakness. The fact that you're not starting off with a blank piece of paper. You have to think, how does anything I do implement, one, my brand, mm -hmm. uh, two, the existing systems we have, the usual processes. There's a lot more to think about, but you still have to put effort and concentration on innovation and not just in speech. There isn't a company around, let's be honest, and I'm sure you interview mm -hmm. a lot of people. There's no one not saying, we we dedicated to innovating and it's one of our core pillars of our strategy but most of the time you know they it's just talk really yeah <laughs> that's just talk and that also demotivates people inside companies because you know it doesn't matter they hear the ceo come up and say yes it's very important to us but they see it doesn't translate into action so it doesn't create that culture of innovation mm -hmm. that's needed so as well you say that sometimes middle management can be in the way between yes. the younger generation with some very bright spark mm. ideas and top management who would like to see those ideas um, being made real and you have mid-management mid being scared of doing something or offending the big boss. Yeah, and I think one thing's offending and I think it's actually even the big bosses that are, uh, are scared there. I think it's that, if you think about it, if you a big boss inside a company, you're getting your nice salary, you're getting your nice bonus, you're doing quite nice thing for yourself. Now, but just going up with the status quo. You know, if something happens to your company, a lot of them, Let's be honest, you can leave. You'll go to the next big company that you do. But now you want to try something completely different and do things in new ways. It's, it's almost like an unnecessary risk on a personal basis. Mm. But that's why I was talking about a lot of time when the founders are still the ones at the company, it becomes very different. Because they look at it with different eyes. It's not a short-term game for them. Adrian Gore's not thinking, okay, well, if it doesn't work for me well at Discovery in three, four, five years' time, I'll just go be the CEO of another company. You know, he is there for the rest of his life. He's growing this. And that's also why it's doing so well. So one thing from the top, but also you know, in the man middle management, there's too many people that aren't incentivized to innovate at all. Mm -hmm. If you're those guys, it's easy to get well rewarded in, this, in, a, in a lot of these large companies. It's easy to get well rewarded just doing the same old thing. I also want to get to the startup. Yes. Because um, a lot of our viewers are also interested in starting a business. Yes. They're young, they, they want to do something. Yes. Um, you have a lot of information in your book and a lot of tips yes. on how to do a startup, how to start, what to watch out for, and, and so on. So yes. um, the idea, for example, uh, how do you find an idea? You may have lots of ideas that you think might work, but how do you test that idea? How do you know that there is a need in the market for that idea? Yes, definitely. I think that... Again, ideas are really an output of your thinking. And I think that the most important thing to get that output is the input that you put in, which is the constant learning. I think you need to continually be exposing yourself to new things, um, challenging the assumptions of the way industries do things, and not just assuming that the way things that have always been done is the way that it should be. So um, one of the nice resources I like to um, telling people about is there's a website, trendhunter.com. I say to young guys, make a habit of using this. It's the biggest platform in the world for, for new ideas and newly launched things every day. And uh, over 100 new newly launched companies that have got something different mm -hmm. to them are, are showcased on that website. Start looking at that because, you know, it, it's, a, it's a type of learning that shows input. Your mind will naturally start connecting those type of dots where all your learning comes together and the great ideas will begin, start coming out. So one thing that's very important is the learning uh, continually. A, se a second thing that's very important is don't just try to do something fancy. It's very easy these days, it's, and, and bigger companies are more um, 
they, they've done this more wrong than the smaller companies. They're more guilty of this. But to say, look, we're going to use the fanciest blockchain thing and combine it with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and look, we're innovating. That's not innovating. These things are just tools. Mm -hmm. Real innovating is just finding a way to better serve your client and your customer or, and to make profits mm -hmm. doing that. Um, often you need to do it, and especially now there's a whole new tool set. The things that are mm -hmm. at your disposal are just amazing. But it's not, it's not just trying to do things that are fancy. That's not innovating. Mm -hmm. It's trying to understand your customer better than ever before and then finding what can you, what's available today to actually suit that problem now. So I think learning, number one. Two is to make sure you're solving a real problem with whatever you're trying to do because if you're really solving a problem, people are willing to pay for it. And that, uh, you know, there's no, nothing worse than trying to create something that people aren't willing to pay for. And then challenge the way things are done. Don't just every single time you come across something, think to yourself, doesn't need to be done that way. Is there a better way for for doing it? Mm -hmm. And then once you've got that insight to say, maybe, you know what, like, for example, Airbnb said, mm -hmm. okay, maybe people would uh, pay to rent out someone's couch for the night. You know, once you've got that, then then go about testing that assumption. You don't have to spend a lot of money testing. Uh, one of the large companies recently, they want to do, uh, they spend millions and millions on research all the time to just understand what physical products work or not. Today, exercise with them where it just said, look, um, I'll create in, in two days, I'll just, I'll create a one page website, fake product, not mentioning your name, and I will put out some ads for this fake product. And then we'll see. From that, it's great. You can see, is it something people are interested to see whether they're clicking on it? You can see the type of people. Mm -hmm. Is it men? Is it women? What are the age? You can get all the different things. You can see the different behavior. No product was created. I just had to think of something strange. Mm -hmm. It was just to demonstrate to them uh, out of scratch. But it was such an amazing exercise that how cheap and simple it was for a few hundred rand managed to test really, or demonstrate how you can test a new idea. Is this something that's going to work? Because you don't want to feel the pain mm -hmm. and the challenge mm -hmm. once you've launched mm -hmm. something. Okay. I just wrote one last question. Okay. Um, in terms of the exponential potential, you yes. have a trick in your book in which you have put the chapters in an exponential uh, yes. number order. Just yes. to explain to me why you did that. Oh, okay. So if you're reading the book, you might be a bit surprised that it goes <laughs> chapter one, chapter two, chapter four, chapter eight, not like a usual <laughs> one, two, three, four. And the, way, the reason I wanted to do that is to demonstrate uh, really the difference when a company between growing linearly st and steadily to growing exponentially. By the time you get to the last chapter, I think it's chapter 12, I think you're on chapter, I could be wrong with the numbers, but 2048. Just to show what a difference is, if you keep doubling, if you keep over time doubling your revenue, doubling your profits, changing things, making massive leaps and uh, having aims to, to have massive leaps. It's way different, you know, 2048 versus 12. So I decided the best way to do that would, I'd actually number the chapters that way. This isn't the time for small little changes and things because only because technology now you can do things all the time so much better, exponentially better than mm -hmm. ever before. So if you're trying to improve and improve, improve, Sooner or later, someone will leapfrog you and in a massive way. Sure. Dean, thank you so much for coming in and thank chatting to us. Thank you so much for us. having me. And if you want to see how to grow your business exponentially, I can recommend this book. It is called Exponential Potential, so much more than a disruptive playbook. And the author is Dean Furman. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.